one of our friends in the meeting asked me to to address today this phenomenon. It's been a powerful full moon. Some of us may have felt that, a super moon. And then we have these phenomena of sunstorms raging. The sun is in a in its 12, 13 year cycle, very active, rumbling, bringing lots of upheaval to the planet, to our own bodies and minds. The stars this year, apparently, I'm a don't know anything about astrology, but all I'm hearing is what's like, woo, what a year! <laughs> I don't know, but yes, we felt it, don't we? There is, of course, a relative truth. Why is it relative? Because it's affecting our experience in our bodies and in our minds. When the sun is exploding like crazy and sending out these geomagnetic storms and they're hitting the subtle body of the earth, we were like, ooh, we might get a headache. Or other phenomena, the full moon being so strong gets the tides in our own emotional bodies going. Emotions may steer up from this powerful moon just as we can see in nature when we're at the ocean how extreme the tides high tide and low tide are during times of full moon and new moon how it's affecting the planet the nature so of course it's affecting us our humanness yes granted and we have to bring that in relation, of course, and this is a lot what we speak about in these meetings. How does that body-mind experience that is always changing relate to that of me as awareness being unchanging? And as it is so complex and in the same time so simple, but from the human perspective, it seems so complex. We cannot just utter the truth. It's like this and that. Chapter closed. It was nice to meet you all. Now you know how it is and forever happy after. In a way, this, as we spoke about last meeting or the meeting before, I don't remember, this, these stages that we go through apparently as a body-mind on the path. Until we... And that sounds like time again. That's the paradox. We come back to our original, true, ever, never changing experience of our humanness and our consciousness being one. We go through this stages where we need to emphasize different aspects of the whole and like today to emphasize again that which is fundamental in my experience which is the awareness because this unchanging aspect this still aspect of consciousness
is the one that we can rely on. It's the one that is eternal and infinite and will never let us down to, so to speak. The phenomenal experience in our life is ever-changing and things in this world do not last. I have here a good example. I've been very much in love with this ring. Some might have seen it on my hand sometimes when I do some funny gestures. So it broke this week after so many years. It's been such a good companion. And now I'm naked. There's nothing left. Everything left me this year. I had a necklace with a very beautiful Jesus and, uh, and uh, Vedic Yantra. And one by one, all that's left is the nakedness of awareness. And then maybe I get a new ring or a new necklace or a new shirt. And that will, might be very all enjoyable. But if we don't have the fundamental aspect of consciousness, if we don't have clarity about that which lasts, which is eternal, we will give our mind the power over and over again to pretend that its happiness depends on the moon cycle, on the sunstorm, on the weather, on all of that, on how other people talk to us, how my boss or my spouse or my partner speaks to me. That is all relatively true, but absolutely Nothing ever affects this purity that we are. And what we have to understand in this context or to see for ourselves in this context. When we observe our life, how the mind, this apparent separate me, continuously is looking for explanations, confirmation for why I'm feeling, how I'm feeling. It needs to know. It's one of its biggest attachments. Why does it need to know? Because it promises safety, security. When I, the separate me, know that I am miserable because of the full moon, for example, it gives, in that moment, this explanation gives a certain quality of, we could almost say peace. It's like, ah, now I know why I'm feeling like that, what's going on. We can all observe that in us. So the mind not being able to cross that bridge, as I always say, to awareness, to consciousness, to our true nature, by definition being a contracted, limited aspect of consciousness, not being able to see perceive with its limited functions the totality, the unlimited, infinite nature of ourselves 
is constantly busy trying to explain the universe, its own experience based on this limited perspective that it somehow squeezes and fits in into this idea of a separate me. But it comes with a high price. This, sometimes I call it fake security, fake safety, this construction of the separate me to create an environment and a setting that is controlled to a degree that, that brings safety to me. And this limiting of the unimaginable mystery or vastness of consciousness, limiting it down to its own limited perspective, gives us maybe a certain stability in life. And that might be even very reasonable and appropriate. in the stages of life that we go through as an avatar, as a teenager, as a kid, as a young adult, even for a long time, I might need those structures to navigate through life. Absolutely. But here in the deepest truth, eventually, come to the conclusion that this limiting truth to a structure that the mind can package in its own limited way comes with the huge price that we become this mind made me and miss as a price for this fake security, fake safety, miss out this inherent peace and happiness and love and joy of awareness. Very often, due to this conditioned belief of me being this mind-based me, when these phenomena like the stars, the full moon, the sun storms, my cycle, come about, very often we take the limited explanation, the limited reasoning for from the mind based on our conditioning, maybe as an astrologer or hobby astrologer or hobby astronomist. With the, well, well, the mind loves that. It just takes the first good, reasonable explanation, feels better about itself, apparently knowing what's going on, and stops there and doesn't look deeper and takes the copy of life for the original and in that way misses the whole magic and beauty. 
which is, so to speak, behind. So even though we can acknowledge that certain factors are of course affecting our humanness, our bodies, our minds. And in India, this is very common. See, there is when there are prayers, there is they're usually ending with Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Om, peace, peace, peace. Why are they piecing three times, so to speak? It's very common understanding from the Vedic literature, the oldest written spiritual wisdom books, that we are affected in three ways, so to speak. The first shanti is for our body. When we are troubled with pain or other dysfunction in the body, it has a certain effect. The second shanti stays for our mind. When our mind is unhappy and the depression moves through or we are angry or we are frustrated it's not a pleasant experience in the body mind so it affects us to a certain degree and interestingly this old wisdom has a third shanti which is the environment the cosmos it is already recognized in the old wisdom of the perennial wisdom it's called sometimes that all these the cosmos the stars my own mind and my own body has a certain power to affect my experience and in a way, paradoxically, as more I open and become transparent and release of my conditioning, as more I might be actually affected by the stars, by the sunstorms, by the moon. I get, become more sensitive. But what is important to understand here? My experience is affected. Not my self. My human experience in the form of thoughts, feelings, and sense perceptions is affected to a wider or lesser degree depending on my sensitivity by the outer phenomena. But that which is experiencing those phenomena is inherently peaceful. Just witnessing those, sometimes it's called the eternal witness. And all the Shantis are a compassionate, loving support because, of course, in the final analysis, this eternal witness is one with the body-mind and it wishes to be free from pain, from emotional, mental suffering and also free from an environment that is harmful to us as a human being or as any sentient being.
we could very often in the non-dual teachings we stop here and say you are that unaffected witness and awareness and all these phenomena all these experiences from your partner from the environment from the cosmos from your mind it all doesn't matter it's just your personality it's just the weather it's just you know everyone's dying who cares this is to me a very limited perspective because if we look closely we will find what duality there is awareness and then there is the phenomena. It's a stepping stone, a way to bring about the clarity like we did today that I am awareness, that I am that sun. Often it's called the neti neti approach. I am not this, I am not that, I am not this, I am not that. I am only awareness. And no matter what happens, I'm not affected at all. And we see that a lot when we go to Arunachala, for example, where we have the professional non-dualists. <laughs> I am the eternal witness and nothing ever touches me. Mm. And maybe I'm boiling because I'm freaking out with my emotional inside world all that suppressed stuff that is coming up through the sunstorm or through arunachala and i don't know what to do with myself but it's not me anyway so whatever i'm not dismissing that it's a very important step and that's why we going there also over and over again we have to be clear what is fundamental and this awareness like the screen that is not touched by the movie is our true nature but it is also true when we come to the deeper understanding and the circle closes so to speak again and this awareness come back comes back for the rest of it, own non-dual nature that we see that the screen and the movie are one. And the screen being an aware screen being one with its functions of humanity, thoughts, feelings, perceptions, is so intimately one with its experience that it feels deeply for all of its experience. And that's the paradox that the mind will never be able to understand how this loving awareness can be free and independent, free from this world, free from this movie, and in the same time uses its own freedom to fully engage in its own creation.